Hello, I'm Luke, and I like to complain about things on YouTube. And today, I want to talk about how to pronounce the Greek word kaire or chere, depending on what century we're talking about this word. It literally, in Greek, is a command meaning rejoice, and it's a way to say hello in ancient and modern Greek. And something really bothers me, which I've talked about in a previous video, which are the anachronisms of the pronunciation of ancient Greek. Well, what do we mean by ancient Greek? The classical period of ancient Greek is considered to be the 5th century BC, essentially. After that is called Koine, or Common Greek, as spread by Hellenism, like Alexander the Great and his conquests, all the way up to about the 4th century AD. After that, it's called Byzantine Greek for about a thousand years, and after that, it's known as Modern Greek. The pronunciation of Greek has changed in several different and distinct ways throughout the millennia. In ancient classical Greek, the sound of the letter chi, we call it chi in English, in modern Greek it's called he, this letter is pronounced in the ancient and classical way as a velar unvoiced plosive followed by a bit of aspiration. So it's the combination of ka plus Ha, ka, ka, which is a simple sound for an English speaker to make because if we want to talk about a uh, kite, kai, we just say kai, and that is the beginning of the word in the ancient pronunciation. Now, the modern pronunciation of the letter kai, it's the name of the letter itself is he, and it has become a fricative. What's well, a fricative? Sounds like the letter F, as in foxtrot, or the letter S, as Sierra, are fricatives in English. Modern Greek also has a fricative sound, uh, which is represented by the letter chi, and in front of uh, back vowels like a, u, o, it's ha, and in front of front vowels like e or e, it's chi. And so in this word, in modern Greek, it's pronounced chere. So, what is the problem I have? I have a problem when people combine and mix these phonemes in a way that is completely anachronistic. For example, um, people will try to restore the ancient pronunciation of the letters of alpha and iota in sequence, which are, which are pronounced ai in the ancient way, ai. And then by the 2nd century AD, in the popular pronunciation of Koine, and in the 3rd century AD, in the more conservative pronunciation of Koine, it starts to become an E. This is also happening in the Latin language at about the same time, which is interesting. So uh, this diphthong becomes a monophthong. It goes from I into being simply E. However, the sound of the letter Kai doesn't change from ka into ha until at the very earliest, about the beginning of the Byzantine era, the 4th, 5th century AD, and for certain does not really become that fricative pronunciation until the 10th century AD. Um, it's possible it was happening earlier. It may have been an affricate, something like a ka, ka, in the early Byzantine period and later became a ha. Uh, the point is that these sounds don't go together. The vowel ai and the sound of a ha are separated by hundreds of years. And now I'll show you a picture here of the Ranieri's Greek pronunciation chronology spreadsheet. You can find this at bit.ly slash Ranieri Greek pronunciation. And here you can see that the ai and the learned pronunciation of Koine, ai, changes to e for almost all speakers of the conservative pronunciation by the third century, by the third century AD. And here it is in the popular, the less conservative pronunciation of Koine, in the second century AD. So one could very reasonably, for ancient Greek, pronounce the diphthong ai as e. However, one cannot reasonably pronounce for ancient Greek the sound of the letter chi as ch as a fricative. It just doesn't make sense. A lot of people who speak ancient Greek pronounce this as chaire, and this is completely wrong. It is utterly anachronistic. It makes no sense, and it's not useful. 
As English speakers, it's actually quite easy for us to make this sound exactly. We just use a normal initial k sound because the initial k sound of English is normally and properly an aspirate. Kaire, kaire, as if I'm talking about a kite or something. Kaire, that's pretty close. Well, what's the next plausible development or pronunciation that we might be able to use? Well, that would be with the later koine in around the 2nd or 3rd century AD when the ai diphthong transforms into the e monophthong, but we still have the aspirate k. So this would be kere, or possibly the palatized aspirate kya, kere, kere. Then we can presume in the early Byzantine period, that's when we first start getting some evidence that this no longer is the aspirate, but not clear evidence that it's the fricative yet, which comes later in the Middle Byzantine time. So I here am going to assume that it's the affricate, which is a combination of the ja plus the xia, which will be dominant later. So it's a cha, cha, chere, chere. And if we want to pronounce this the modern way, the way that came to be true sometime in the Byzantine period, then xere is the way to pronounce it. When we reconstruct an ancient language, we have to put a lot of attention on the phonemes that we are also restoring. It does not do to restore one ancient phoneme, ai instead of e, and then leave in the modern form a different phoneme in the same word. It's completely illogical. It's totally anachronistic. It's regenerating Greek in a way that it was never pronounced and it never existed. If it's too hard to distinguish the aspirate ka from the unaspirated version ka, then just use the modern Greek pronunciation for everything and all phonemes in ancient Greek. And while I don't think there's anything wrong with using the modern Greek pronunciation for ancient Greek, you absolutely can use the classical or the koine phonemes. Have a look at this spreadsheet, bit.ly slash Ranieri Greek pronunciation, and pick the pronunciation scheme that you want to use. Thanks for watching. Kairate. Hawaii no natali kyodie Esa luz quam kidom multam nuntio ibilidor